Hello and welcome, I'm Machine Dana, how are we doing really, really well? In this video, we're going to be going through how you can set up your Go XLR. Go XLRs are awesome. I've recently added one, I found it to be amazing so far. Brilliant for the faders and sound improvement on my streams and on my YouTube videos has improved significantly. I actually went with the Go XLR Mini, but in this video, we're going to get into a little bit about the differences between the Go XLR Mini and also the full-sized. The video is going to be split into sections here. So the first section is going to be reviewing the actual Go XLRs themselves. The second section will be actually setting up the hardware of the Go XLR, the hardware side. I'll briefly discuss a one PC versus a two PC setup, as well as obviously the Go XLR full size versus the mini. From there, I'm going to talk about using a wired headset versus a wireless headset because this can cause problems, significant problems actually. So depending on what type of headset you are using uh, and also the microphone input that you are using can dictate how you set this up from a hardware point of view as well as the software too. We're then going to go into the Windows side of things and the Windows setup for this, exactly how you should be setting it up and the different options you should be aware of. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about the Go XLR software itself and what the fade is doing, things like that. I'm not going to be going into a great deal of detail about perfecting the audio in this video, but I will mention where those are located and some key points about the software. The final thing will be, I will just be linking to further content. Whenever I talk about other videos, all the videos will be linked in the description below, but rather than having one 30 or 40 minute video, I'd rather have a much shorter video to set it up and then different videos for the different elements of things that you might want to do with the Go XLR. Kind of makes sense, but I'm sure I'll get criticized either way. You either have too long videos because you're trying to cover too much in the video, or your videos are too short and they don't cover enough, and it's like you really can't win. But anyway. <laughs> so yeah, this is a video all about the Go XLR, and it's hopefully going to be a really good resource if you just bought the Go XLR, or maybe if you've already bought it and you're just trying to make the most of it because you've not set things up. If you do find this video useful, I'd appreciate a like on the video. Feel free to subscribe to my channel for more streaming and content videos. And of course, if you want to jump in my stream, my stream on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash machine Dana. Okay, let's go. Okay, first I want to talk a little bit about the differences between the Go XLR and the Go XLR Mini. Fundamentally, the hardware inside it is the exact same. There's just a little bit more capability in the larger. Price tag, you're looking at about $400 for the larger and around about $130 to $150 for the Mini. They've each got four faders on. You can mute those faders. That's what all these are here. They each have a swear word button here and then a mute microphone button here and here, which will just temporary when you press it to hold, mute the microphone and let it go. Whereas the hard press on the microphone on here will toggle it on and off. Now on the large, you've got different pitch, reverb, echo, and gender. They're more like effects and just on the fly effects that you can apply. And also you can use presets for that as well. Have a megaphone, robot, hard tune, and some effects here. So if you're looking to have on the fly effects and you've got the spare money to upgrade to the large, then I would recommend that. Whereas if you're not really bothered about that kind of stuff and you want maybe the space on your desk, because this is about twice the size of the mini, I'd recommend the mini to you. You've then got some sample presets that you can program into the Go XLR here as well. The Go XLR Mini doesn't have that, but fundamentally, all the jacks that you have in and out of both of these are exactly the same. One key difference is the larger Go XLR is powered by the mains, so DC, whereas the Mini is powered by USB, essentially, so it's powered from your PC, which is why you get a little bit of space saving with the Go XLR Mini. So it's just showing the back of the devices. The reason I just wanted to demonstrate this is that they've both got the XLR microphone input, and obviously that's one of the main reasons you would buy this. If you're using the Go XLR and you're not using an XLR microphone, I really question why you're really using this product. Pretty much the main reason you would want to use this is so that you can have an XLR microphone capability. So if you're using a 3.5 jack microphone in, you're kind of missing out some of the functionality of these products. So on these mini, these two jacks here are actually located on the front, but other than that, everything else is exactly the same except the DC in on the large is not existent on the Go XLR mini because it uses USB power here, whereas this USB power on the large is not powered. It's just purely for digital signal. So now we get into the hardware setup of the Go XLR. Depending on whether you've got a one or two PC setup here will depend on how you loop this. I'm mainly going to focus on a one PC setup because most people here will be having a one PC setup. The key difference between a one and two PC setup is you're generally going to have a PC that's controlling all the audio, like your game, your Discord, your system sounds. And then on a two PC streaming setup, your secondary PC will be the one that then handles the grunt work of encoding and uploading. So we'll then have OBS or Streamlabs 
OBS running from it and actually just needs pretty much one sound input from it. So for a two PC setup, you need to have the USB from your GoXLR device connected to the main PC that you're using to do the things that you're broadcasting. For instance, gaming, Discord, and so on. And then you connect the second PC up through the line out of the GoXLR into the line in of the broadcasting PC, which will create one audio source to then come into OBS Studio. I'm not going to go into too much detail about OBS Studio setup in this video because I'm going to do a separate video about that. I don't want this video to be too long. So this is why on both devices, you've got line ins and lines outs because they're able to be used to basically push between PC lines if you need the extra lines. But if you've just got a one PC set up, the line is actually happening. The communication between your PC and the GoXLR is happening mainly through the USB connection. So to set this up, you need to make sure that you're plugging in your XLR microphone via an XLR cable. These are the three pin cables here, and they're normally a male to a female connection, just like this. The female connection goes into the back of the GoXLR. And by the way, neither of the GoXLRs come with these wires, so you'll need to purchase these wires separately. Once you've plugged in your microphone, you now have a microphone that is XLR inputted. On the GoXLR Mini, it's powered through the USB, which is why you've got the extra power pack thing at the end of the USB line. If you've got the GoXLR large, you're obviously going to have to plug it into the mains using the plug socket and power connector. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking, well, this is kind of set up, but it's not. We now need some line ins, particularly for your headset. So if you're using a wired headset, then you're going to need an input wire from your headset so that any sounds from your headset can be received. So you connect your headset via the 3.5 jack into the headset in. This is indicated in green. It's on the back of the GoXLR large or the front of the GoXLR mini. If you are using some sort of 3.5 jack microphone, that microphone would go into the front of the GoXLR mini indicated in the pink, which is the microphone in jack. It's on the back of the larger GoXLR. But again, if you are using a 3.5 or USB style microphone here, you are really taking away some, some of the functionality from the Go XLR by not using an XLR microphone. Some USB headsets do come with both the USB input and also a 3.5 jack. If you're using the headset microphone and the headset itself has a microphone 3.5 jack, that would be what goes into as a microphone input into the Go XLR, the front of the mini or the back of the large. I'm not going to go into too much detail about how you would set this up on a wireless headset. And the reason is because I've got a separate video that I've already done for this. Please check the link in the description. But there's some extra kit that you might need to buy here. Mainly it's the 3.5 to 3.5 jack, which just connects GoXLR's headset line to your PC. It'll use the USB then to communicate as well. But just check the video out for that. But one thing's for sure, if you've bought the GoXLR expecting to just plug this in with a wireless headset, it doesn't work like that. There's definitely going to be some extra stuff that you might need to get to get this to work on a wireless headset. And that's definitely a lesson that I learned when I got this. Kind of annoying actually. So now at this point, we've got the hardware sorted out. It's connected and there's just a few other things that we need to do from a Windows point of view to get this working. So you can right click on the speaker icon and open up the sound settings or you can do a search in Windows for sound settings here. The output device is the main sound output and you want to be selecting the system TC Helicon Go XLR here. This is all the system sounds that you want to be hearing as an output from Windows into your headset, essentially, or speakers or whatever it is that you're using as a sound output. And just to briefly explain what the system sounds actually are, if you then go scroll down to the app volume and device preferences here, all of these different devices are applications that are running at the moment that have some sort of sound output, for instance, Chrome or the system sounds or even like OBS Studio. And if I also now play Spotify, Spotify will also appear here as well. And the great thing about this is you can define the default or a specific input output for each one of these devices. So I'm not going to get into too much detail about this again, because I'm going to do a separate video about some of these things. But if you want to get really fine a detail about which output device you use specifically for your browser, for example, you would set that here. But in essence, the output sound will bundle it all into one system line from the GoXLR once it's done all of the fading work and the muting and stuff like that. So that's why you would select the system as the output here. And in terms of input. I've got this set as a line in because I've got a wired headset and I've had to use the line in to recognize the wireless headset and then to my PC. But most people are going to be selecting a chat microphone here and using the 3.5 jack input that we talked about earlier. So depending on whether you've got a wired or a wireless headset will depend on what you're using here. If you're not sure, just start with the chat microphone. See if you're able to pick up some chat. If that doesn't work, try the line in. But this relies on you probably having done some work for the wireless headset at that point as well anyway. 
properly. And just to go into a little bit more detail here, we need to click on sound control panel. This will open up the control panel here. Another way of doing this is to right click on chat and set this to the default communications device and the system sounds right clicking and setting this to the default device. And this will just set the system sounds as the default device, chat sounds as the default communications device. It should make some sense that, but you'll notice as soon as you get into the sound control panel, you've got all these extra lines here. This is very much the GoXLR working its magic. The GoXLR is designed to be heard and split lots of different lines and then to cleverly kind of merge all those lines into a single line if you then need that. And we'll go into a bit more detail about that in the OBS and Streamlabs OBS video that I've created on how to set it up with that because there is a broadcast line that bundles everything into a single line that you can then use within OBS Studio called, I think it's broadcast line. Just for reference point here as well, on the recording device, if you are using a line in because you've got a wireless headset, you can right click and set this as the default device for the line in on a wireless headset and the chat mic then becomes the default comms device. The line in, just for ease here, we need to listen to the headset device by clicking on listen to this device and selecting your headset here. As long as you've got all the connectors that I discuss in the wireless headset video, this will allow you to hear sounds through the headset even though it's wireless. If you're not sure, again, just experiment with some of these settings or check out the videos that I've linked below. There's obviously quite a lot to cover here. So at this point, you should be in a position where you've got the hardware set up, you've got Windows configured. The GoXLR should be able to receive microphone sound and push that sound into Windows, depending on what fader level and whether it's muted or not. It will also be picking up system settings from all the different sound sources that I showed earlier, for example, the browser or system sounds, sounds from Spotify or whatever. So really, we're now getting into the final bits of the video where we're going to go through the GoXLR software. The GoXLR software is a prerequisite. You can't really function the GoXLR without the GoXLR software, um, or at least if you can, you probably probably a hacker and I don't know why you wouldn't use the software so <laughs> So the GoXLR software, you need to get this installed and updated as soon as you've plugged in and set up your GoXLR. You can X off this in the top right-hand corner and just minimize it. I would recommend just keeping it minimized to your tray here most of the time. The software just shows like a visual representation of the hardware that you're using. There are some default profiles here which you can go through, which just change kind of like the colors of the physical GoXLR itself. I've gone with the Vaporware. It's quite a cool color setup. There's also a visual representation of what's happening on your GoXLR as well. For example, if I press the mute button on the microphone, it shows as being muted on the software. So now at this point, we've got the option to set up the more finer details of what we want the microphone to sound like and also what frequency levels we want to be higher or lower and even things like the gate and the threshold and the compressor and things like that. I'm not going to go into detail about these because I'm going to do a separate video on it, but I will just briefly touch on some of the key settings here. First of all, the noise gate in this software. Most of you watching this are probably streamers that have set up noise gates within Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio, you essentially don't need to have those on your microphone to cut out low level humming noises or high level screams and things like that. You're all screaming on stream, right? Are you even a streamer if you don't scream on stream? Well, say that when you're drunk. Are you even a streamer if you don't scream on stream? <laughs> So we're handling noise gates and the quality of the microphone within the GoXLR software. So you can set the gate threshold attenuation attack release here instead of in Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio. We've then got an equalizer. This just controls like the sound of your voice. So the lower end of your voices, the mids and the highs, you can just tweak what you want them to sound like to actually fine tune essentially how silky or not you want your voice to sound. I'm not going to go into details about where you need to put these because there are loads of videos out there and I'll be doing a separate one anyway, but this is where you would do that and you can fine tune the different frequency levels. And next, we've got the compressor on the GoXLR Mini. The key difference between the Mini and the full-sized GoXLR is the equalizer. There's a, a wider range of frequencies you can control. The full-sized GoXLR also has a de option here as well. The compressor is a really important part of the microphone. The software compressor here is, first of all, it's going to be better than what you can achieve within OBS Studio or Streamlabs OBS. You've also got a little bit more control on the fly by using this software. One thing just to make sure you do when you've made all these changes. I've learned here that if you don't click the save button here, some of these will revert back. So now that we've got our microphone working how we would want it to work once you've set that up, we're now on the mixer itself. And here's where we can just fine tune the audio levels of the different things. For instance, the microphone level or the chat level, music, so on and so forth. Now within the GoXLR, by default, you've got the microphone, the chat, the music, and the system sounds on the physical hardware. And it's even physically printed on the hardware as well. So even though this 
is set to be a system, you can set it to be something different. And within the software, you can still control different things as long as it's mapped properly. To remap things, you can right click on the open sound settings here, go into the control panel, and you can specifically define, for instance, the game volume within this game line here, or the sample volume, and so on and so forth. I'm not going to get into those details in this video, but that is where you would do it. So if you wanted to split off, for instance, your gaming sound, you could do it on this, then just have to set channel four in, in this example to be the game source rather than the system source. So here's where you're essentially reprogramming these faders. Personally, I found that mic chat music and system has worked pretty well for me so far, but so you probably won't have to do any of this other than set the volumes right. Now, one quick tip here. I noticed that the music volume on my stream was really low or really loud. I couldn't get it right. My viewers basically kept telling me that the music was too high and I could barely hear it or that the music was too low and I could hear it too loud. The reason for this is is the headphones itself, you can set the volume to yourself. You can set the volume of what you hear with this toggle here. So this is the headset audio level, and this does not affect any of these faders. Your microphone volume will still be the same. Your chat volume will still be the same. It's just the level that you hear through your headset of the mix of these sounds. So if you find that you can't quite get the volume right of your music, or it's too loud for you, but not loud enough for people in chat and things like that, you really need to be playing around with the headset volume for you, and then using the visual indicators and also speaking to your chat and things like that to get a feel for the right levels of music and game and system. And this might take a couple of streams or a little bit of testing to do it. Routing, this is quite an important part, this routing section here. Now, all we're doing here is mapping what inputs attribute to an output. And this is where an example, you can actually hear your own microphone speak through the headset. Now, obviously in real life, you speak and you hear yourself speaking, so you hear it once. So you shouldn't necessarily need to hear a microphone loop itself back through the headset to hear it again a split second later. But there might be some situations where you do need to hear the microphone and some people just prefer to hear what they sound like, in which case you would click to route the microphone through here. But here we're saying through the headphones, we want to hear the chat, we want to hear the music, the game, the console, line in system and samples. And we can uncheck any of these things. For instance, in the headset, if I wanted the broadcast stream mix to hear the music, but not me to hear the music, I could uncheck this. I wouldn't hear the music, even though my broadcast would. The same can happen in reverse. You may not want your stream to hear music, but you may want to hear some music whilst you're gaming or whatever, in which case you would do it that way around. And the same goes for all of these. And we're saying that the broadcast stream mix is essentially a bundle of all of those sounds into one. And this is where on a two PC setup or using OBS Studio, the broadcast stream mix bundles everything into one and you can configure what you actually want to be on that line. I've put everything because I want all of my lines onto a single line into OBS Studio so I can just control the one audio source within OBS Studio. And then I do all the rest of the configurations on the physical microphone itself or on the faders or within the GoXLR software. It's completely making, from an audio mix point of view, my streaming software redundant. It is redundant. It's purely just a visual representation now within Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio. Hopefully that makes sense. I think it does. So that just about covers it, the initial hardware setup, the Windows setup, the GoXLR software setup itself, and some extra little tidbits of information. Now I just want to talk briefly about additional content. I've made a number of different other videos. I've made another video which will be connecting and splitting off your audio for music into the GoXLR. For example, if you're using Spotify or Apple Music. As mentioned, I've made a separate video about setting up a wireless audio headset with the GoXLR. Check that in the description below. There'll be a video for isolating the Discord chat and being able to fade those separately from all of your other sounds with the GoXLR. And finally, there will be a video on making this work to the best of your ability and its ability within Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio. And if I get enough time, I might also do another video where I just go through in detail where those faders should be in terms of setting up a really good audio volume, gates and compressors and things like that. Hopefully you have found this useful. It's a little bit different to my normal videos, but I know a lot of people use GoXLRs, so I wanted to put this content out there because I had to go to so many different sources to get this information. Information, I thought, you know what, I need to pour all this into kind of one video, but then videos that branch off to other videos of mine if people need them, if that makes sense. I think that makes sense. Maybe not. I don't know. If you did find it useful, once again, hit the like button. Feel free to subscribe and have a wonderful day, guys. Take care.